hands for a moment and let's pray, shall we? Father, we give you glory and honor and praise today. Oh, Lord God, we praise you. We're, we praise you. We're not worthy to receive our blessings. But, Father, you gave us our blessings from you, Lord God, because of Jesus. And we love you for that, Lord God. Hallelujah. You made us worthy by the blood of the Lamb. And so we are so thankful this morning. We glorify you today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know about you folks this morning, but I feel a sweet spirit in this place this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Will you turn to somebody and just shake their hand or hug their neck or just love them for a moment. Will you do that? Bless the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <coughs> I'm so thankful. Honey, I am so thankful that I'm a Bible thumping. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Amen. Bible thumping. Pew jumping, Jesus loving, devil shoving, blood bought, red hot, so redeeming, shouting, screaming, overcoming child of God. <laughs> She'd give me sound effects over here, I tell you. Did it sound like a rap song? <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Good to have fun. Praise the Lord. I'm looking forward to the day when we can just have fun all the time. Amen. Forget all about your worries, all your about your pains, and all about everything that's around you. And just, just praise the Lord. I was reading somewhere... Um, it's it's not a not a Bible, but it was a, a, a secular book, and, and I was reading about this, and and somebody said that um, that they hope to get to heaven by the skin of their teeth, by the seat of their pants. The seat of their pants. One. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a long time. <laughs> That's probably where I heard it from your mama. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, but the thing is, we're getting to get to heaven by the blood of Jesus, Amen. by His grace, and that's the only way we're getting there. And some people are happy just to get there and do nothing and and just praise the Lord and just barely get in. But I I don't know about you, but I'm happy to bring a lot of people with us. I want to bring people with us, don't you? I want to bring bring as many people as we can to Jesus before he comes. And so we got to get busy. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's, not, it's, not, not, it's not a time. I know that there are people that are not feeling well and they're sick. I, you know, that's, but some people just like to lay around and not get out and, and uh, go to church. And uh, I hope it's None of it. Well, it's none of you guys because you're here. <laughs> you're here this morning. Well, praise the Lord. In two weeks, we'll be turning the clocks back one hour. And so we're not going to tell you because we want you to get here. <laughs> Amen. Wait, sister, Bella, she, she came to church one, one day and we just barely opened the door. She was here. She goes, how come nobody's here? Where's everybody at? They're just, you know, Sheila and I and 
We had the best time though. Oh, we did. We had a good praying time and everything, shout time, hugging time. And uh, she, I told her, I said, you didn't turn your clock back one hour, did you? She goes, no, I forgot. <laughs> I said, that's why you're early. She thought she was just right on time, but that was funny. <clears throat> She hasn't been early since. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, she hasn't. Been. But praise the Lord. She's such a sweetheart. And keep praying for her. You know, I uh, we've loved her from the very first minute we met her. And I don't know when we met her, Lovey. It was in the eighties. Eighties. Yeah, so we've known her for a long time. All all the sisters. And so we we love them and as a matter of fact, uh, one of the sisters Naomi. Naomi's is listening, and Bella does Baltimore. too. She lives in Baltimore, Maryland, and she listens every Sunday. Isn't that awesome? Through video, so that's pretty cool. And uh, of course, Bella does too. She when she can't be here, she, Sister Bella, she, her and Rick get in front of the TV and they they watch it on live, almost. <laughs> huh? And Jess and Rocks do too. Praise the Lord for them. We, we appreciate them. Some of you, you haven't met Jesse and Rocks, but we, 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 we really love them and, and thank the Lord for them. They live in uh, Chandler, Arizona, and they're part of this church. Amen. Amen. And uh, we're so thankful for them because they, they, uh, they're a blessing to us. Amen. Some of you, uh, well, you appreciate that I smell pretty good every Sunday. It's because of his soap that he sent me. <laughs> and uh, Jesse does. And so we appreciate them so much. Amen. We're going to ask Brother Marvin if you've come and Brother Ronnie if you've come and received the morning tithes and offering. And thank you for your giving. Stand, Brother Ron, and pray over the offering. Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you give us each and every day. We thank you, Lord, that sometimes the blessings overtake us, Lord. They catch up to us and just run us over, Father. We thank you for all of that. And in Jesus' name, for the furthering of your kingdom, bless this offering, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you and give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs> praise the Lord. <coughs> this week has really been a busy week. I mean, it really has not only here in conjunction, but around the world, it's really been busy, very active. Our world is very active. And uh, so many things that are happening in our world. And it seems like the, sometimes the world has gone crazy. It seems like it to me. You turn on the television and it seems so depressing to watch the news because so much of what being said is not the truth. And it's Sometimes it distorts the, distorts the facts, and so you you want to you want to go into the TV and or into the newspaper and just tell somebody, hey, you, you got this all wrong. And sometimes people jump to conclusions before the facts are presented. And so, but I want to present a fact to you this morning: the fact that God loves you. And he sent his son for you to die on the cross. And then he rose again from the grave. He did it for you. That's facts. So this morning, I, I want to talk to you that really dear to my heart. I want to talk to you about the covenant of God. God made a covenant. He first made a covenant with Israel. He told Israel, if you will serve me with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, with all your strength, I'll be with you always. And Jesus told us when we come to him as Lord and Savior, he said, I will be with you always, even to the end of ages in the world. And so we have covenant and promises that God has given us. 
And this morning, I want to share a covenant and promise that God has given us as Gentiles. Because that's what we were before we came to Jesus Christ. We were just ordinary people that were lost without hope. The Bible says we were without hope in, in the world at all. No, no hope. We can't, you can't put hope in, 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 in the government. You can't do that. You can't put hope in, in the entertainment center uh, because they've gone crazy too. You can't put hope in anybody, even in the schools. You can't put hope in them. But you can put hope in Jesus Christ. He's our hope. So turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles. I have two passages of scriptures I want to, I want to talk to you about. The first one is in Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 8. Second chapter of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 8. And when you all have it, I, I'm just going to ask you also to turn to Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, the second chapter, verse 1. So let's go and Ephesians, the second chapter, starting with verse 8. Praise the Lord. I was studying about the covenant, and the Lord put this in my heart. For by grace, the goodness of God, are you saved through faith? <laughs> faith in Christ Jesus and the cross. Hallelujah. He died on. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Aren't you glad for that gift? Amen. That was promised before the world began. Before the foundation of the world, God knew he's going to send his only begotten son. And that's a promise that he was going to redeem us. And he fulfilled that promise. Now, I want to tell you something before we get into the other scriptures. God has made promises in the scripture that they have not been, they have not been fulfilled as we know it right now. But in the coming months and the weeks and the years ahead, they will all be fulfilled. He's already fulfilled them because Jesus came to fulfill the law. He, he came to fulfill the Old Testament law. How, however, there are some things that are still going to take place. He already fulfilled it even before the foundation of the world. But there are some things that haven't taken place yet. And so we as children of God don't need to be impatient with God. God has a plan. He has a timetable. And he will do it when he does it. <laughs> Amen. Not when we want it done. But when he does it. Amen. Let's go on. Not of works <laughs> or merit, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision, uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at the time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and with God, without God in the world. Now turn with me to Hebrews, the second chapter, verse 1. Just read two, two verses. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, it almost sounds like a, a continuation of what we just heard in Ephesians. Therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Let me say that again. We ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. 
What have we heard right here? How will they know without the hearing of God? Hearing of the word of God. At least at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just compense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them who heard them? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. There is so much in here that I just want to share, but there's way too much. And Lord, you're too much. You're just so, so much, Lord God. We love you and we praise you for it. And Lord, Holy Spirit, please help us, Lord Jesus, right now. Holy Spirit, please anoint your service and preach your word that it would challenge us and it would help us to understand and help us to grasp what the word of God is saying. And Lord, that we might share with others and they too give their hearts to Jesus Christ. We pray in your precious name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you know that the Word of God is the truth and it would never fail? It will never fail. We begin to look at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So we're saved by faith and not of ourselves. We're saved by grace, not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. And by faith we receive Jesus Christ. Nobody can receive Jesus unless the Holy Spirit draw them. The Holy Spirit's job is to draw you to Jesus. I love that. When Jesus said, I must go, he told the disciples, I've got to go so that the Comforter may come. And when the Comforter comes, he will teach you all truth. He's not going to teach you fables or teach you some weird thing that comes from outer space, something that some man made up. He's going to teach you truth. Jesus is truth. God is truth. The Holy Spirit is truth. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit is here in us to show us God's word and what it means. And show us his promises and his covenants that he made with mankind. God looks at us as Gentiles. And he has given us something that was never possible in the Old Testament before Jesus came. He gave us, he grafted us into the body of Christ. Hallelujah. He gave us salvation through the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. It is by grace, the goodness of God, that we are saved through faith and not ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, not of merit, not of good deeds that we might do, not of kindness on our part or even on our strength, but because of Jesus who went to the cross for us. Amen. We were strangers and foreigners of God. We were foreigners to God. We were strangers. Amen? We were without Christ, so we were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the promise of, of the covenant of promise in the Old Testament. But when Jesus came, when Jesus came, everything changed. Amen. There are some people that want to tell us that Jesus has done away with the Old Testament. He hasn't done away with it. He fulfilled it. What he has done away with 
is the ordinances that man made it. See, there's a big difference. That's why so many people in Israel, when Jesus was here, they got upset with him because, see, they put ordinances, which they thought was the word of God, which they, they told everybody that it was part of Moses' law, and they put their own ordinances in so many people would obey them. They made some stupid things up because they wanted control. And religion still do that today. And even in the name of Christianity, they do that. Because they want control of people. And control of what goes on. And I'm sorry to say that I, I believe that there are some really good Bible-believing churches that are trying to do the same thing. And God's not pleased with that. And I believe with all my heart that we need Jesus and to show us that we need the Holy Spirit to reign in us so that we know what the Word of God is. Jesus didn't come to destroy. Jesus came to build up and fulfill. Amen. And as Gentiles, we were lost. Strangers, foreigners, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. But when I look at Israel today, and I see what is going on with Israel, my heart is broken Amen. for them. Because according to the promise, covenant of promise that Jesus gave to us when he died on the cross, he died for everyone. He even died for the Palestinians, for the Hamas, for all those people. He died for them. But they have rejected Jesus Christ. But this is what I want us to know this morning. When Jesus died on the cross, he broke down the the petition, the wall that was between the Gentiles and the Jews and made us one body. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Whoever receives Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior is part of that body. Yes. Right. It doesn't matter who they are. If they receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and they invited him to come into their hearts, they're part of that body. There's only one body. Because Jesus broke that petition. See, before the Jews were alienated from the Gentiles, they couldn't really associate with them. They couldn't even come into their homes and eat with them. Did you know that? That was the law. But when Jesus died on the cross, now I want you to know, because of the rejection from the Jews, the leadership and the high priest and those who were in leadership of the Jewish religion or the Jews, the Hebrews, because they rejected him, it opened up the blessings for, for those who are Gentiles. Amen. That's what God intended in the first place, that we might be saved. Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. So they, they were, there was a wall between the Jews and the Gentiles. But when Jesus died on the cross, he, he broke that wall. And he made us one in Jesus. So somebody says, well, the Jews are still off rockers. Well, let me tell you something. The 12 of Disciples were Jews. <laughs> Jesus was born in the Jewish family. Hallelujah. Those people in Antioch who loved Jesus Christ with all their hearts, with all their soul, they got filled with the Holy Spirit. Guess what? They were Jews. But they were the first ones to be called Christians. Why? Because they acted and talked. And we're like Jesus. So they called him Christ-like. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. When God looks at us, I'm so thankful he doesn't look at us and say, well, you're an Okie. 
<laughs> You're Alaskan crow's head. <laughs> yeah, or California broom pickers. She was born in California. She was a broom picker. And I was born in Indiana, so I'm a Hoosier. A Hoosier. A who? A Hoosier. But when God looks at us, you know, he sees different. He sees us as children of the Most High. He sees us to Jesus. Because Jesus died on the cross for us. And Jesus arose again. And Jesus changed us. Now, I, wanna, I want you to know that not everybody who are Jews, not everyone that is Gentiles, will come to Jesus. But one day, every single person on earth will one day be children of the Most High. We're all children of God, but because we were created in His image after His likeness, so you might call it all, everybody in the world, children of God. However, you're not children of the Most High. You were created by Him, but until you accepted Him, until you accept His Son Jesus that died on the cross, you're not par part of that body. But you become part of that body, and you are commonwealth along with Israel. I love it. We support Israel. We have the flag of Israel. We always have had the flag of Israel. We have always supported Israel. It was always in us, huh, love? Because it's not because they are Jews. And that's not. It's just because we know that they are God's chosen people. Amen. They are God's chosen. He chose them. It started with Abraham. He said, Abraham, separate yourself from your family. And I'm going to show you, and every step you walk is going to be yours. Hallelujah. Now, I, I have some news for those people that are called Hamas. I have news for those who call themselves uh, Hez Hezbollah. I have news for those that call themselves Iranians or Iraqis or Saudi Arabia. But if you can see where... Where this new heaven is going to look, or new earth is going to look like, when Jesus reigns on earth a thousand years, <clears throat> Israel's border will be all the way from the Nile River, which is in Egypt, all the way to to Euphrates River, which is in Iraq and Iran, all the way up past Turkey, which where Antioch was in. And, and uh, Syria, where Damascus is, and all the way down to Saudi Arabia, that's going to be all Israel. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's awesome. And guess who's going to reign mm -hmm. in Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. Jesus is going to be in Jerusalem. Yeah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we'll be, see him oh, face yeah. to face. But we might see him and I pray that we do. We, we, we will see him. I'll put it this way. We will see Jesus face to face when we get to heaven. And matter of fact, we will present our crowns that he has given us. We will present our crowns at the feet of Jesus. So whatever you do for God, God will bless you. But God also will reward you in heaven. Did you know that? You don't do it for rewards. You do it because you love God. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that partition has been bro broken. That wall has been broken. So there's a lot of things that happen when Jesus died on the cross. L let me put it this way. The wall of partition that was between the Jews and the Gentiles were broken. The Bible says that. I just read it to you. And also in the temple where it separated the holies of holies and the holy place had a curtain. And when Jesus died on the cross, that curtain from top to bottom ripped. See, before, a natural person could not even look into the holies of holies. They couldn't do it. 
you had to be a high priest. And you better make sure your sins were forgiven. You better. I want to tell you something about the high priest that was there when Jesus was. And the high priest that was there when Paul stood behind, before him. That high priest was not the son of Aaron, which they were supposed to be going on down the line. They weren't. He wasn't. The, the high priest that they had was appointed by the Roman government. And so when Jesus came on the scene, Jesus, who is our high priest, yes, he died on the cross, and he paid the sacrifice, not with lambs or, or bulls or with blood of, of, of goats. He personally laid down his life and shed his blood for us. He became the sacrifice. And when that happened, the wall in, or the curtain in the temple ripped and the wall of partition between uh, Jews and Gentiles, it was split wide open. Amen. And the Bible says that whosoever shall come to, the, to Jesus, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. And I'm so glad and so thankful today that it doesn't matter what you have done in your past or who you are or what you look like. You can come to Jesus and he'll forgive you of all your sins and wipe it as clean as, uh, as a slate. Wipe it clean like a racer. Just right, wipe it right off and no residue on it. Clean. And wipe you as white as snow. Mm -hmm. And forgive of your sins. Our problem as human beings, we want to bring up the past. That's what the <coughs> devil tried to do, Tony. He wants to bring up your past because he wants to torture you. Mm -hmm. Jesus said this to Purdy uh, last Sunday. She said, you just remind Satan what his future is. Yes. Because the Bible says that God, hallelujah, for seven or thousand years is going to put him in a pit, yeah. a bottomless pit with a chain wrapped around his neck. Yes. After the yes. thousand years, that he's going to release him for a season, for a short season, and the, then he said he's going to take him, and Jesus himself is going to throw him yes. into the lake of fire. Woo! Yes. yes. Now take that. Yes. Amen. When he tries to remind you of a, your past, just tell him about his future. Amen. Get off my back, devil. Get behind me. Jesus says that to me all the time. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be walking behind her and she says, get behind me. <laughs> and then we crack up. That's funny. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You've got to read all of Ephesians and you've got to read all of Hebrews. See, when Paul wrote both books, he wrote it to the church of Ephesus. Now, Ephesus is right on the a border of Lebanon and Turkey. Okay? In, in the modern, modern, you would find out where, if you look at them on the map, in the modern. And all the other churches, except for those that are close by uh, Ephesus, which is where he wrote the book of Ephesians. All the other ones are right there in Greece. And so you have Turkey and Syria and Damascus where Paul actually had a, a vision of Jesus and got saved. He already had murdered people who claimed to be Christians. He'd arrest them and bring them to Jerusalem. They would put him in jail, put him in prison and throw away the key and so so you, we got it made now you you were talking about blessings this morning and that song with his blessings on us if you lived in those days and you lived in any part of the world your life would be in danger matter of fact that's the way it is right now except here and even here in the united states uh, that young lady was just killed me and i think it's because she was jewish outside of the synagogue or outside her apartment. Killed because she's Jews. Hamas went into Israel because they were Jews. 
And it didn't matter if they were soldiers or not. Even killed babies, cut off their heads. And killed them. There was a family of five. I've heard, heard about a family of five. Now, the other people in Washington, D.C., all those people, they're so deceived. You, you see all these people marching and protesting and, and raising the flag of the Palestinians and so forth. Can I tell you something about the Palestinians? There are a bunch of people that came from all, all sorts of, of Arabian nations, and they didn't know what they were kind of like a, a, a vagabond. <coughs> They, they just stuck him in, in the, in, you know, they were just roaming around. Nobody wants them. Nobody wants them. Uh, Egypt doesn't want them to come into Egypt. Jordan don't want them to come into Jordan. Libya don't want them to come into Libya. Or Lebanese don't want them to come there. Syria, they don't want them to come there. They don't want them to stay there. Because they don't want these people. But these people have been a pain in the neck of Israel from the very beginning because Israel refused to do what God told them to do. So they're going to be a pain until Jesus comes. So Israel may, might as well get used to it. There's always going to be people that hate Jews. They hate them. But we as Christians ought to love them and pray for them and support them. Not all of them are, are Christ-like, following Christ. Not all of them are, are doing it. As a matter of fact, the majority of them do not. They reject Jesus as Messiah or Yeshua. Hamashiach. They reject him. But we ought to love them and support them. Not that we're choosing, choosing sides. It's just because God loves them. They're his chosen people. And the Bible says that God will punish those who have come against Israel. And he will bless those who bless Israel. Where did you find that? In the book of Revelation. At the end. So it's not like God just making this up right now, that he's just going to do it right now. At the end of life, God's going to bless Israel. Because they were his chosen. But I want you to know, when you became a Christian, you were brought into the family. You were grafted into the family of God. When you became a Christian, you were grafted in and into the body of Christ. And now you're one with Israel. I don't know about you. That makes me feel great. It's exciting. Because they're my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. The promises of God are so sure and so steadfast. You need to read the word of God. And find out what all the promises that God has promised you. The one promise that I've always hung on to is the promise that Jesus said, I will never leave you nor Amen. forsake you. Amen. The promises he gave me a, a, later on, I will bless you when you bless other people, when you bless Israel, when you bless, I will bless you. If you curse, I will curse you. If you love God with all your heart and all your soul, all your might, with all your strength, all your mind, he will bless you and help you, and he'll take care of you. He'll never forsake you. He'll love you to the end. Hallelujah. And I, I wish I had time. I don't have the time or the, or the <coughs> up here to, to really grasp all the love and what God has done for us. He's done so much for us. By his grace. When we get to heaven, do you know we're going to ever be learning? Somebody said, what I'm going to do when I get to heaven? Right. Someone told me one time, oh, are we just going to praise God and that's it? Uh -huh. No. You're going to learn and learn and learn. And, and when you get into the presence of God, you won't be standing very long. When you face Jesus face to face, 
you're going to fall down to your face because you're not worthy. You, you will feel like you're not worthy to be in the presence of God. And folks, that's why it's so important that you and I, when God is moving by His Spirit, that we relish, that we we hold on to what the Holy Spirit is trying to do in our lives because we just got a little bit of heaven. We just get a little bit of heaven. Because I, I tell you this morning, if without the glorified body, your body could not stand to be in the presence of God. This flesh could not stand to be in the presence of God. But Jesus and the Holy Spirit gives us a tiny bit of glory. Gives us a tiny bit of glory. And I don't know about you, but I want more of it. Don't you? I want more of his glory. More of his power and more of his spirit in me and in you. Amen? Praise the Lord. Let me let me get to this. Hallelujah. I love this part right here. In verse 18 of chapter 2. If, if you ever get to uh, read it all, read it all. The 18th verse of chapter 2 in Ephesians says this. For through him, through Jesus Christ, we both, Paul's talking about the Jews and the Gentiles, have access in one spirit unto the Father. We no more are foreigners and strangers, but we have access in one spirit. That means the Holy Spirit that speaks to the Israelites, speaks to the children of Israel, speaks to the Jews right now. The Holy Spirit that speaks to us is one spirit mm -hmm. and he makes us one body but we speak in one spirit mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is so mindful mm -hmm. of God that the Holy Spirit says wait a minute you have access to the throne of God and I, I believe when with, with all my heart the Holy Spirit is saying this to the church of Jesus Christ today if you have access to the throne of grace and to the throne of God, by the Spirit, you have access, then why don't you use it? Come on, come on. That speaks to my heart. I hope it speaks to your heart. That why are we not using what God has given us? He gave us the Holy Spirit. Why? To show us the truth, to be a comforter, show us the way, to lift us up, give us wisdom and power, and even part of his glory, then why aren't we as children of God, why aren't we as a church using what God has already given to us? You say, well, I don't know how. <clears throat> The Holy Spirit will help us. Amen. Yeah, I've been praying for wisdom. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will give me such wisdom that comes from God. Not my wisdom, but His wisdom. I've been praying for wisdom. And I know that the closer I get in the Word of God, the more I read, the more I study, the more I get in tune with the Holy Spirit, the more wisdom He gives, gives me. Why aren't we praying for wisdom? Do you know that when God gives you wisdom, He gives you truth and He gives you peace? We need to pray. God, give me wisdom. Give me peace. Give me truth. Give, give me what that is not humanly possible. Give me, give me the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. When, when somebody says I, we, we need to have the power of the Holy Spirit the first thing a, a lot of Pentecostals think is that we need to sh run around and shout and, and, and uh, you know 
do everything. You know, roll on the ground. <laughs> but that's not what he's talking about. <clears throat> we as Pentecostals, we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the gifts of the Spirit. What the church needs now more than ever in the history of the church is discernment. Right? Because some of some of the people in the church, you know what? They'll believe anything. Come on. I, I, I heard a preacher one time on on the radio. I was listening to the radio in, in the truck I was driving, and I heard this preacher, and I, I had to reach over and turn that thing off. Because what he was saying was against my spirit. He was trying to glorify himself instead of glorifying God. See, that's the difference between some of those some of those people that are preaching on TV, that, or, 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 or not, I'm not saying all of them, I, some of them are really awesome preachers. I, I can name you a few that I, I really like to listen to. But when we get to a place, it's not about us. It's about Him. If we can get our minds off ourselves, and that's why there's so many preachers that have fallen. I can name you a few, but I'm not going to do it on the, on the YouTube. But there's a lot of preachers that have fallen because they got their eyes off of Jesus and got their eyes on themselves. Now, the Holy Spirit, when He comes in and He helps us, He helps us to get our eyes and our our desires off of ourselves and put it on Jesus. And that's what it's all about. Now, some of the things I'm just telling you this morning, they're not on my notes, I'm just sharing this with you because I believe the Holy Spirit's trying to prepare us for Jesus. You know, not only is he trying to prepare us for when we are raptured out of here, but you know, he's got work to do for, he's got work for us to do when we get to heaven. He, you're, you're not just going to be sitting around playing a harp. <laughs> I can't see Paul playing a harp. I can't. I just, <laughs> my mind, I, I look at Paul and I just, there's no way. Maybe a guitar, yeah, sure. But a harp? No, there's no way. <laughs> Am I right, brother? Okay. But I can see people ruling nations, Christians, children of the Most High God. I can see them sitting on the thrones next to Jesus. There's all, I, be, I believe there's all sorts of layers of heaven. Some people that you think is they're the most dynamic person they've ever lived, they're going to maybe at the lowest. Which is okay because they're going to be happy where they're at. But then there's going to be those, and I believe along with the apostles, they're going to be on the thrones sitting next to Jesus. Because he said that we will sit with him in his throne. A lot of people have failed in the past because they got their eyes off Jesus and got it on themselves. And that's the biggest sin the church has ever, ever done. Pride. And you know where that came from. Mm -hmm. Now let me close with this this morning. I, I, I haven't got hardly any of those notes. I'm telling you. Jesus wants the best for you and he provided the best for you. Why are we settling for less? Amen. I speak to my heart also. The same thing. Why are we settling for the least? The worst. I guess maybe we're not expecting it here. We're just kind of getting lost or we're just getting, getting kind of disappointed or disillusioned so whatever happens happens when God says I want the best for you now I don't mean material things I'm not talking about those things I'm talking about in the spirit I'm talking about the spiritual things God wants you to have the best that he provided the best don't settle for anything less than the best 
Amen. Amen. If I want to go to a, a business, I'm a, I'm going to look at their pro, what is it called portfolio? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to look at their portfolio. I'm going to look at what they have already done, and I'm going to choose. If I want a, a, a waterfall, I'm going to go to this man. <laughs> I've seen his pictures. I've seen his work. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I'm not going to go to some other Joe down the road that, you know, doesn't know what he's doing. I want experience. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> we have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Why are we depending on ourselves instead of the Spirit of God? I'm, I'm talking about myself too. Why are we why are we depending on people instead of depending on God? God is going to He's going to bless us. He's going to lead us. He's going to guide us. He'll work with you. You say, I'm not worthy. I, I, I'm, I've done this and I've done that. God has forgotten that. He has wiped that away. And he has said, as far as east is to the west. Now, somebody told me, oh, where's that at? I didn't read that in the Bible. Well, you haven't read the whole Bible then because it's in there. Amen. Amen. He's already taken care of you. You're a child of the Most High God. He did it on, on the cross for you. He broke that petition. He broke that wall down. And we're still putting walls up between us and God. We've got to stop it. Amen? Amen? God loves you. He calls us children of the Most High. Jesus goes on to say in Ephesians, you're my brother, my brethren. You're my brother and sister. God said that. Mm -hmm. If God said that, who are we to say no? Amen. Amen. You stand your feet. Yes. Praise God. I had to tell you what was on my heart. I'm trying to prepare you. As pastor, that's that's our jobs. Hello. We want to prepare you. Not just for heaven, but we want to prepare you for your life here on earth. Jesus will take care of you once you get there. <laughs> it's getting there. I mean, sometimes I feel like a little kid, Sister Tony. I'm in the back seat, and we're on a road trip. Are we there yet? <laughs> Every five minutes, are we there yet? You did that quite a bit. She still does, yeah. I'm driving. Are we there yet? Should we, on, on the phone, or should we, you know, that's really cool about Sheila and I. When we're traveling, we take turns driving, and we made it from here to... L.A., uh, Newport Beach, from uh, Crispy Donuts here, remember? On Bud and Mom. Bud and Mom. Remember we used to be Crispy Cream Donuts? Yes. We made it from there. In, tw in less than 12 hours, we made it all the way to... We are just driving. I mean, we'd fill her up, and she'd take 200 miles. I'd drop 200 miles. And in the meantime, she's sleeping over there, and I work or she's driving, or I'm sleeping, or is it when I'm driving, I'm sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> and she'll say, are we there yet? The beach is no, we're, the beach is calling my name. No, I, she said that one time when we stopped at Yermo. Oh, yeah, Yermo. Your oh, little tiny, desert. it's out, it's in the desert, and it's there's a marine base not, not too far from there, and we stopped at a diner. 50's diner. That's cool. A 50's diner. That was really cool. It brought us back to, remember some of you, I, I'm not that old, yeah, but maybe you know some of you. <laughs> <laughs> remember in the 50s they had the diners and they still do in some places. But I, I remember Webb's California Drive-In. Webb's Drive-In. That's where all the teenagers went. Of course, that was before I was born. 
<laughs> and they had those big old hamburgers and stuff when was driving. And, and when Sheila and I got married, uh, we didn't get married in the 50s. We got married in the 70s, okay? okay? Just to make it clear. When we got married, her mama said, I'd like to have a wet burger. Because they used to go down there as teenagers, didn't they? Because that was mom and dad. They went down there as teenagers, so, uh, you, you know, they might have saw the fawns, I don't know. But they went down there, and uh, so we got them a big, they still had big old burgers. Big Ben. They still have Wedge Drive-In in Modesto, California. They still do. After all these years, like 40, 50, 60, how many years? <laughs> 70 years, they still, or 80s, they still there. God has the best for you. Amen. Let's take it. Amen. Oh, man, there's so much he wants to do in your heart and in your life. Let's just bless him. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We're ready, Father. Lord, I'm ready for your power, for your glory, for your spirit, Lord. Lord, we are ready for you, Lord. We're ready for you. We're ready for your blessings, Father. Lord, we just ask that you pour out your blessings upon your people. Lord God, we want more of your spirit. Because we, we know that when we get more of your power, more of your glory, and more of your spirit, Father then all these other things will just fall into place. So we need you, Lord God. We need you, Father. Yes, Lord. Lord, this church needs you. I need you, Father. We need you more. I need you more. More than yesterday, I need you more. More than words can say, I need you more. Then